Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back everyone to webinar live. Uh, all of you are watching live from MRS Type Facebook and not forgetting to all alumni are watching from home. Uh, so hoping you guys have a great lunch, great rest, great bread and also a nice prayer and hoping that you guys are more energized uh, to the final webinar of this year's ESPKG webinar day. Right. So my name is Muhammad Hazib Iman and I'll be your moderator for today's mm -hmm. webinar entitled Making an Impression in 17 Seconds. Okay, I am currently studying in College Mara Banting, uh, International Baccalaureate and planning to pursue my degree in Forensic Science and Criminology. All right. The speaker is none other than Ms. Lenny Omar, currently holds a position as the Head of Gas Pricing, Gas and New Energy Division in Petronas. For your kind information, Lenny is also an interviewer on a voluntary basis for Petronas Education Sponsorship Program, a special scholarship program offered to students like you pursue education after SPM. Ms. Lenny is an alumnus of Amarasa Typing Bash PKP 9192. She attained a full scholarship from Petronas where she pursued her levels in Rugby School in England and with Chemical Engineering at University College London, UCL. Lenny has spent over 20 years with Petronas where she started her career as a mergers and acquisition analyst. She was then appointed as the head of upstream and gas research, a role, a role which required her to advise Petronas management on long-term gas and LNG strategy. But in the position, she spoke at various local international conferences on global gas and LNG matters. Lenny currently heads the gas pricing team where she ensures affordable gas supplies for the nation whilst ensuring business sustainability. Lenny is passionate about training and teaching too. Since 2008, she has been an active trainer in Petronas for problem solving and global gas industry knowledge. She teaches mathematics and English also at the local primary school during weekends. Since 2016, she has been an interviewer for the Petronas Education Sponsorship Program, PESP, and she is also keen to share her experiences with Marisian Typing students, which is you guys lah. Okay, <laughs> please refer to your slide deck available through PDF attachment via Telegram. Please also log in now to www.stido.com on your personal device and check with your respective class helpers for the event code. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the Ask tab at the bottom of the page. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session. All right. Please may I present to you our speaker for this webinar and please welcome Ms. Lenny Omar. Assalamualaikum Hazim. Okay, thank you so much for the very kind introduction. Usually, kalau uh, speakers kan, they call this the graveyard shift. You know, graveyard shift meaning that uh, uh, typically kerja malam tu is malam is the graveyard shift. But for trainers, for teachers, for speakers, it's after lunch because it's panas, people are tired, you know, and people wish sometimes <laughs> they are not there, you know. So uh, yeah, anyways, yeah. thank you for the kind introduction. Um, yes, if you go to the next slide. Uh, yes, this is the, the title of my presentation today, Making an Impression in 70 Seconds. But, you know, before I go into the crux of the presentation, um, I think I would like to um, give a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of uh, background. Lah. If you go to the next slide, I think. Um, I think this is, uh, Hazim already read my credential study and I just want to highlight that my years in MRSM typing was from 91 and 92 and of course my experience in typing was, I think a lot of times is very intimidating. I mean, only the straight A's come to typing and you feel very, very not smart in other words. Lah. So uh, I was in 503, shout out to anyone who's 503, just put your notes in the comments so that I can see who you are. And of course, um, I got a full scholarship from uh, Petronas and uh, pursued my degree in UCL and also working Petronas right now. So like Hazim said, uh, I'm coming from a perspective of an interviewer and I've been doing interviews for scholars since 2015, 2016. So it was like, uh, it's been like five, four to five years. So I'm very, very keen to share my experiences. Um, uh, Moving on, um, moving on, yeah. So this is like, betul ke ni? Psychology studies reveal that the first impression are formed within uh, seven, to, seven to 17 seconds of meeting someone. Is that true? 
I mean, it's a little bit unreal that 17 seconds is all uh, what it takes to make an impression. But studies were done and it's quoted everywhere. So what I'm simply doing is just, um, you know, borrowing this research and, you know, and uh, make it a context for my presentation today. So, but for the context today, we are talking specifically about how do you carry yourself in an interview. Yeah? Like it or not, your interviewer is human. Yeah? And she or he has a very limited amount of time to, uh, to assess you. So we have to make every minute count. So um, therefore, we need to do our best lah to impress them. So itulah dia, the 7 to, uh, 7 to 17 seconds too. It sounds cruel, right? But I mean, really, if you see someone, don't you judge them immediately? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> and so I'm trying to give you some tips on, you know, what can we do better and how we can brush up ourselves in terms of skills, in terms of how we speak. Should you need to go to a scholarship interview or any interview for that matter? Eh? So I'll sh I will try my best here. I say if you ada soalan, uh, boleh je tanya kan. Kalau tak, I feel like I'm talking to myself here. Uh, I'm not used. <laughs> this is probably only my second webinar. I mean, I've talked in large audiences before. I can see their faces, but now I'm like, I hope you're listening. So that's much I can say lah, kan? <laughs> Next slide. Okay. So before I go into the the how to, eh? I just want to share a little bit about uh, typical um, scholarship filtration or selection process. Eh? Um, when you are applying for scholarship, your results matters only during the application. Eh? You get selected through the process only when you select, uh, when only when you have uh, selected. So. You can imagine how many students actually got straight A's across Malaysia. Yeah, it's about 7,000 candidates. So, and imagine going through the process for, for us as interviewers to really filter down to 300, how much work it takes. So, there are three types. I mean, typically, typically this is how it's done. You have psycho, a few psychometric tests and then before you even go to the face-to-face. So the psychometric, ada beberapa jenis, you know, there's a personal style psychometric test, there's thinking skills psychometric test, and uh, the, the last one is face-to-face. -face. So I, I, well, I, uh, I have to admit, I am no expert in the first two tests yang uh, I mentioned in this slide, but uh, I'm here to share what is potential, um, how do how do uh, interviewers pot will potentially assess you during your face-to-face -face interview? Eh? So um, before I even go to how they are even uh, assessing you, let's go to an example on how you are being assessed during the day. Eh? This is just an example. Next slide, please. All right. There are various ways on how you are being interviewed. Either one-to-one. -one, Hmm. Tapi logik ke 300 orang nak interview ni? Yeah? Or even, even more lah because 300 is the final number. Usually we go through about um, 700 to 1,000 students. So you can imagine, you really have to be really, really good to be noticed. Yeah? So uh, one, like I mentioned, either it's a one-to-one -one interview or it's going to be a group interview. I'm giving you an example whereby um, it is a group interview lah eh. So uh, typically it's you with other five or six students. So there were going to be six or seven students in one sitting. So we give you a case study, right? We give you a case study. And it can be as random. Tak adalah random sangat. What I'm saying is it's something yang uh, apa? Uh, the trending topics or topic terkini lah. What's hot on the market. And this one is just an example on what's hot on the market right now. We're talking about skills of the future. We give you a very short uh, para here. Eh? Let me just read it to you so that we are into the zone sikit lah. Eh? Uh, skills of the future, according to WEF, World Economic Forum, most valuable skills have evolved as shown in the figure below. Eh? You can see that in 2015, some, a list of things, a list of skills was considered important. And moving forward, you know, it's no longer important and new skills have emerged. Eh? As a multinational organization, yeah, we strive to develop our workforce to ensure that they have the skills to be productive as well as marketable. I don't think this is a hard topic lah because I mean you guys, you guys are the millennials, you guys know what I'm talking about here. 
But this is a question. Yeah? Your task. Yeah. Determine what would be the top five skills that will be most valuable in the future. And you will be given two minutes to present your key points on the case. So that's an opportunity for you to speak alone there. Yeah. That's an opportunity there. Tak adalah sentiasa you kena rebut airtime with your with your teammates. And then subsequently in your group, and then there's a group work pula, uh, spend 30 minutes to discuss the following. Which skills do you think the company should focus in developing their staff? Yeah. Giving an example of Petronas, where I'm working right now, I've been working in a uh, company for 20 years. I joined in 1999. The skills, what is important in the organization has shifted. Yeah? Tak semua are very receptive to these changes. So, I'm asking you again, what skill do you think the company should focus on in developing their staff? What is your rationale and how do you implement those ideas? Yeah? Okay tak Azim, topik ni? Senang kot. Uh, but 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 I have one question. Okay, I yeah. think most of the students also would like yeah. to know how do we tackle this issue, right? You know, uh -huh. like sometimes in an group interview, uh -huh. there must be one person yang suka dominant this session. Uh -huh. So how? What do you think? How do we tackle those issues? Ah uh, eh? yes, ada je orang dominant. You know, ada je. That is a very interesting question, and it is actually part and parcel of communication. Okay, I will uh uh that's uh. Simpan dalam poket dulu soalan tu. Uh, I will address it during communication. Yes, there is. There, there's going to be who is dominant, and there's going to be a, a a person which is completely opposite of dominant. Yang langsung tak cakap. There will be those. So this is, you know, uh, it's not. Um, you know, when you go to scholarship interview, your A's are no longer important here because we have selected you already. So what are we looking for now? We are looking for how you carry yourself in a group. How do you work with each other? Because when you go to a, uh, when you join an organization, we want someone who's cooperative. We want someone who brings ideas. We want someone who's brave. So yes, memang lah sekarang you baru form five. Yeah? Maybe you need to develop more of that. But we need to sort of use our judgment and project. Well, can we as an as a employer develop you for the next five years during your degree? Yeah, give you the necessary education and skills and whatnot so that you are ready by the end of the five years after your degree or seven years if you're doing your master's and whatnot. So we, we, we were told to do that. We were told that, jangan tengok dia sekarang. Do you think the person can be developed further in the next five years and will she or he be ready for the organization? Yeah, so we, 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 we were told actually to, to look into those kind of parameters. Okay, just to give another feel, eh? if you go to the next slide. Uh, uh, the next slide, ni, um, next slide has it? Yeah, next slide ni, for me, this is probably something that you can relate to. Eh? Um, uh, multi sorry, 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 Miss Lenny, can you yeah. adjust the distance of the mic? Oh, quite sangat. Eh? Uh, tak. Bunyi angin. Banyak bunyi angin. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me know lagi cepat eh. Kalau <laughs> nanti bunyi-bunyi angin tu. Uh, okay, anyway. Multi-generation workforce. Another example. Um, it isn't rare uh, these days to see an 18-year-old and someone in their 80s working in the same office. Eh? The widening generation gap is a phenomenon of our time due to both longer lifespans uh, and younger do it off to an early start in the workplace. That means that people are living longer and uh, you know people are gradu graduating faster. So diversity. Diversity is a very important topic you should read up. Diversity, including generation, generational diversity, is very much praised and welcome in some respects, but there are challenges that can't be ignored when you have five generations together. Yeah. So a very simple two, two sentence even. Two para and two sentence for you to think about. And again, how do you ensure that your group um, interview, that you can shine in your group interview? Yeah? You have your two minutes to actually an you know, opportunity for you to speak. But then uh, the fight begins when you mukala fight. I mean, like the challenge begins once, once you, you know, speak in your team. How do you ensure that your ideas shine? How do you ensure that you show the best, um, uh, 
best be in your best behavior in terms of communication, in terms of teamwork, in terms of your ability to change your ideas. So um, there are typically four areas, eh? four areas that we look at. Next slide, please. Four areas that we look at when we are assessing someone. Dia macam-macam lah, you can call it communication lah, speaking lah, whatever. But but they are, apa ni, it, you kind of run away from these four things that I want to tell you. Number one is communication, uh, just leave on this slide. Number two, agility, teamwork and social confidence. So what do we mean by communication? Memang lah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure your teachers, your mothers, your father, your friends, eh, you can communicate better lah. What does that even mean? Eh? You think you communicate better. But as an interviewer, this is the, uh, the ruler, so to speak, on how we measure, typically how we measure. So if I go through it, eh, so, so that you know, and so that we, are, we understand uh, what this really means, is that communication is, number one, effective interpretations. Number two, presentation of uh, formal through verbal and nonverbal mean. If you're slouching, if you're doing this, if you are like, you know, my mind, baju ke, whatever. Well, it, sh it simply shows whether you are not interested or you are really nervous, okay? And of course, uh, smart people from typing, I don't think you have a problem in communicating ideas in a logical and coherent manner. Eh, PKP code na, kan? So, yeah, I wouldn't see that you have a problem with that. But what's good and what's bad? Apa orang cakap kalau, oh, you kena uh, communicate better. What does that mean? So, number one, courage to speak. Eh? And then clear when making a point, logical argument and li uh, to listen properly. You can have a list of things, lah, but what I want to what I wanna highlight, particularly for communications, is courage to speak. Courage to speak. How are we, Azim, do you think, um, your colleagues at Orsin Taiping, in terms of their command of English? How, do, do you think they are like good or do you think they need a practice or do you think that um, they, they speak the Queen's English lah, kira tak ya? <laughs> Polish habis lah, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think? I think most of my friends back then, during my year, uh, they speak moderate English, but at the same time, they have uh -uh. the passion, you know, they have the eager to learn and to practice mm. so that they can perform better in the future. I think that's a good thing uh, yeah. for all these type things to yeah. currently to practice. Yeah. Um, if I if I may, eh, I, I don't mean this, I don't mean to be rude. Eh? I do I really don't. I, I, I'm from Petronas, eh, sorry, I'm from MRSM. I've been in MRSM since Form 1. Eh? I'm born, bred, Petronas, uh, sorry, um, what do you call it? Uh, MRSM blood. I, I feel that uh, MRSM students are very smart, very smart. But when it comes to courage to speak, uh, I think we need a little bit of practice. Yeah, You have the content. What more? Yeah? Jadi kita kena beranikan diri. Tak apalah kalau English tu broken sikit. It's okay. It's okay. Because later in my slides, I will tell you that what I want first is communication and participation. English you, uh, Queens ke, American ke, that's, that's later. That's later. Yeah, I would like to encourage everyone to speak. And if there's a, I'm sure your your school has a program to ensure that everybody, uh, macam Toastmaster, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard of it. Macam Toastmaster, just stand there, speak about a topic. I really encourage for students, if you don't have it already, please have one. And make sure it is a safe space for everybody to speak and make mistakes. Mistakes are to be learned from, not to be laughed at. You know, so kita jangan, kalau orang tu cakap English terrorist sikit, janganlah usik dia. Belajarlah daripada dia. Eh? Okay. So, what does it mean when you when you have bad communication? Uh, ni cakap pusing-pusing, eh? vague, beating around the bush. What are you getting at? I, I don't get you. So, you have to remember, you do not have all day with your interviewers. Even you do not have all day with your cikgu, your teachers and your friends. So, you really have to make your points clear, loud and clear. And then you don't have supporting arguments. And worse, you interrupt. 
you know, I, I've come across many people who think that, you know, the idea of the best, yada, 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 and then they just interrupt you in the mid beginning with no respect. So it's something that we need to handle. But, you know, all of this comes with what? All of this comes with experience, with trying, with uh, a lot of reading as well. So, but you can't really speak if you do not have the content. Later, you will see that how reading will actually improve our confidence and com our communications. If we can move on. <clears throat> ah, another, another buzzword, eh? another buzzword is agility. The word agile ni, I think uh, baru few years dia masuk, in, uh, masuk like the skills that uh, people or company needs to have. Why? Why are we talking about agility? Because things move so fast. Things move so fast. Whatever was relevant last year might not be even uh, talked about this year. So, what are we talking about when you have good agility? That means you are very uh, open to exploring new ideas. Eh? You take feedback because a lot of other people would, would, could be better than you in terms of ideation. You take those feedback and you work uh, collaboratively with uh, the ones who are more experienced from you. And you definitely, you, uh, you possess a growth mindset. So yeah. there are checks and crosses on the slide and which ones are uh, examples of something um, being a, a person being agile and the other one is not. So, but what I want to emphasize here is point number, point number two and number three. Eh? Open to learning and ask for feedback. There are often times, you know, when we have an idea, we are so, you're, basically you're in, in love with your own idea and you, you refuse to back away and you want to hold on to it even though it doesn't make sense anymore. Like, you know, for lack of a better word, you're a little bit egoistical from, from your uh, point of view. Like, oh, my idea is the best. I've, I've, I've been longest in this field. I must not budge from this idea. But really, the world is changing so fast that new ideas are, must be welcome every time and must be embraced. During an interview, we look at this, you know. Let's say... Um, you have an idea and someone interjects and say, oh, why, why don't we do this instead? Instead of plan A, why don't we go plan B? We would like to see how you adjust into plan B or, or you, you make an adjustment on your own plan to adopt to what your team uh, common purpose and requirements are. So those are the ways that uh, you want to, you know, you want to show your best during a conversation or during your scholarship interview. So, kalau kita tengok on the right side here, uh, playing it safe, limiting to conventional ideas, then again, it comes to reading lah. Kalau you don't read a lot, then your ideas will be, you know, homogeneous, dia macam tu je. So, we want to read a lot, you want to, you know, you want to uh, be a little bit courageous in uh, promoting new ideas, it might, which might not be obvious or might not be something that anyone have heard of. You're not listening. Uh, the, third, the third cross to unreasonably hold on to your own ideas if it doesn't work. So we must be able to let go. Eh? Letting go is very important and embracing new ones are very important as well. So, yeah, so we have communications, we have agility. And agility is something that I, I really want everybody to, 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 to keep in their mind because this is the world where everything needs to be agile, not just individual, but even companies. Eh? Even companies as big as an oil gas company uh, like Petronas, we need to be agile on, on what is the business requirement and what is the needs of the customers. And it is changing really fast, especially for the past... I don't know, five, five, six years. It has been really tough for any companies to keep up. So, um, correspondingly, if the company needs to agile, the staff needs to be agile. Okay, there's, there's, no, um, there's no compromise about that. Move on. Okay, just a reminder, we have uh, 15 minutes. 15? 15? Yes. Okay, all right. We have a lot of time. Okay, another one, teamwork. Teamwork ni pun sama lah. I'm sure Hazim, uh, tapi you muda lagi. Okay lah, I lah eh. I've been <laughs> orang lama. Teamwork ni, um, it's been skills of having good teamwork has been in the market for the longest time ever lah since I was small I think. And so what does it mean? I mean, no explanation there. You you are able to work cooperatively, be part of the team, support team decision. You know, um, 
a good example of lack of teamwork is that okay, a group presents something lah, katalah, uh, uh, katalah to your teacher lah, you present something and the teacher doesn't like it. This is a bad idea. Who come up with this? And then there will be one person, ah, ni idea kurang lah ni. Aku tak sokong, you know, something to that effect. So, that is actually a, a good example of bad teamwork. You know, we as a team, we have a common purpose. Eh? We have one goal. And everybody must be aligned. So, getting alignment, or alignment tu maksudnya, everybody understands the same thing and understands that what the goals are, is very important. And we need to see that during that interview. Eh? How do you apply this? Eh? Macam, katalah, uh, give you an example eh? of agility, communications and teamwork. Eh? Mm. Uh, katalah during an interview, there's a there's a few ideas uh, churning, and then a good a good communicate a communicator, for instance, uh, say that he struggles. Uh, he see uh, sorry he see a another team member struggling to to voice out the idea, yeah? and then he would actually jump in and say, "Do you mean this? Yeah? It's not his idea, but he helped lift the other team members' punya motivation." To actually to do better. That is something that we highly, highly uh, encourage and highly value. Yeah? It doesn't make you less mature for not having an idea, but, uh, but you lift someone up and try to clarify his idea. We know it's not your idea, you know it's someone else's idea. But for you to help clarify, it's actually good communications and good teamwork. And to a certain extent, it shows a little bit of your agility as well. So it's not about Kalau dalam group interview tu, it's not about um, oh, I'm I'm the one who shines the best, or I'm the one with the greatest idea, or I'm the one who's hogging discussion, or I'm the team leader. Not really, not really. We are really looking at each individual in these four areas of uh, four areas of uh, apa, uh, uh, for these four areas lah, which is teamwork, agility, and communications. We have another one kan, uh, another one kan, um, Hazim. It's okay. So when we talk about teamwork, uh, just let's go to the uh, the checks and the the, the crosses here. Uh, yeah, you commit and involve in establishing the team goal. You plan with the team. How do you solve this problem of multi generation workforce? Which uh, which problem do you wanna uh, wanna wanna solve? Uh, what is the best skill for the future for this organization? Or how do we work towards it? How do we uh, how do we pitch idea to the management to work to uh, towards it? And a good team will also say, okay, I'll do this. I'll do the writing down. I'll do, I'll do the, the, the writing on the whiteboard for the team. Well, that's volunteering. Walaupun nampak macam angkat pen and tulis je, it is a big, uh, how do you say, a big task for that particular moment. And then for someone to be participative and effectively, uh, apa, uh, effectively lift the other team members also plays a good part. So, Surprisingly, eh, do not be surprised if um, do not be surprised if there are people who are there. They've got good grades and whatnot. Tapi during the interview, they are not participative at all, which is very mind-boggling and puzzling for me. You have get gotten your all your A's. You have gotten all this, all that. Why aren't you speaking during the interview? Uh, itulah, uh, I guess I guess you can help me answer that lah. Why aren't you speaking? Is it lack of courage, like or confidence? Itulah, the uh, the cross number one to exclude self from team discussion. Yeah, why are you doing that? And then number two, avoid from being assigned and passive, not making attempts. Yeah, yeah, there are a few. If I if I finish the last one, uh, Hazim. Uh, social confidence. Uh, this is some, something that I would like to talk about. Lah. I mean, people are, you know, very, 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 um, how do you say, attached to the devices yeah. that I think uh, uh, we, we really look at the ability for you to interact with one another. They much, um, if you ask me, it's a little bit overlapping with, uh, with communications. Eh? But then again, uh, this is something that is coming up. Eh? People are looking at you, how do you interact socially, uh, socially and face-to-face? -face. Because the, the hypothesis is uh, uh, these millennials are so hooked up. Do they really know how to speak to each other? 
Betul ke? Our our apa ni our assumptions ni. So prove us wrong lah. Eh, prove us wrong. Okay, so you socialize, you get along, you treat others with respect, uh, and you have some optimism and positivity. Um, well, no brainer. If you lack social confidence, you're not sociable. You are too cautious. You are well disrespectful, and you are very pessimistic and negative. So those are the four things, lah. Eh? Um, so we want to see how you interact. Actually, also I want to notify or I want to tell everybody that you know during group interview, um, we are not looking for the right answers at all. Salah, salah lah. It's okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you got the skills wrong. It doesn't matter if you got the issue about multi generation workforce wrong. It really doesn't matter. But what matters is how the five or six or seven of you in that team work together to solve the problem. If there's a friction between the team, how do you solve it? Kita nak tengok tu je. Sebab nak kata pandai dah pandai dah. All right, you already passed the two, the two psychometric tests, and now you're face to face. That's no longer an issue. Now. In a physical interaction, how do you interact? Yeah. How do you communicate with each other? How do you lift each other up? How do you ensure everybody is contributing? Yeah. Uh, also, I would like to note that you, um, for for uh, for interviewers such as myself, if I see someone not speaking enough, I will call out. Contohnya, Azim, what do you think? There are two things why I do that. Number one, either you're not speaking enough or I just want to test you. You confident or not with the idea? Yeah. A, a positive reaction would be like, um, okay, I will think about it and I come up with a different idea. A negative reaction would be like, oops. And lepas tu dah tak cakap dah. Okay, that's not what we want. We want you to have the courage to speak and the courage to give ideas and the and your interaction with the rest of your friends during interview really really matters because it gives you it, it tells us about you your personality yeah okay so so what lepas ni nak buat apa kan next slide ah yalah dah cakap semua ni ada you know there's going to be case study there's going to face to face you're going to meet with oh budak-budak sekolah SBP lain uh, other MRSMs uh, not to forget the what the private schools college yayasan together you know you're not going to be comfortable with your own friends in the in the meeting you know in the interview you'll be with these people who are as smart as you what are you going to do what are you going to do so uh, of course I, I i recommend three ways to prepare lah, eh? and of, obviously it's not a shortcut lah. there's no shortcut you really have to start tomorrow or you have to start the second after i finish this uh, this uh, webinar uh, if you go can go to the next slide Azim. okay there's no magic lah. please read up eh? there's no magic you really have to for you to gain confidence you really have to understand or under you have to understand and know what the topic is about so dia akan bagi random topic but topic yang um, which is current lah current topics and if i could read eh, um, digitalization you guys would know this yeah you are the digital natives i guess uh -huh. covid-19 well you must know that uh, living and working with robots um, yeah it's uh, just to share it's definitely very relevant for an oil gas company such as petronas uh, managing social media in the business. I think you will know that at the back of your hand, kalau pasal social media ni, I would think lah. Eh? Uh, managing multi-generational workforce. Women in workforce. Uh, women in workforce. Why is that such a special thing? Eh? Women in workforce. Eh? For company, uh, oil and gas company, it is an issue because women are seeing uh, dropped off from uh, technical, technical, apa, technical work. Uh, to prioritize their family uh, i'm not saying it's a bad thing but i think um i think there's an effort for for companies to actually retain them uh preparing skills for of uh, preparing skills for future of work which is similar to the example that i've given you 
uh, running business that is environmentally friendly, renewables, those are very businessy. Lah. I mean, pretty boring that one if you ask me. I mean, like, yeah, everybody needs to be sustainable. Okay. Uh, but it's a, it's a real issue, especially for an oil gas company such as Petronas, Exxon, BP, because we are traditionally seen as being very dirty. Uh, think uh, rethinking retail, yes, retail. Um, um, yeah, kalau for Petronas, it's um, it's itulah yang uh, your uh, fuel uh, apa? Paminya tu, but for retail can be other retails as well. And how do we attract talents to the company? Why isn't why uh, you know why are the younger people? Uh, you know, oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. Younger people seem to really uh, uh, want a, a, a real work-life balance. But ge my generation is all about, oh, I want to work, I want to earn, I want a big house. Da, da, da. But apparently, things have changed now, I, I think. Navigating life post-pandemic and managing mental health. Yeah. So, I mean, these are just examples. Um, and and then knowing about this and debating about this with your friends or tak yah debate pun tak apa you can just discuss with your friends about this is very important because you know you have already learned all your syllabus your nine subjects or ten subjects that you take at at, at uh, MRSM too, but do you know things outside of your academic life? You we must know because. That is what being asked outside. Once you step out of the MRSM, I don't think anybody will ask about admits or sejarah anymore, lah, kan? It's it's about oh, what happened to Donald Trump? Oh, he's got COVID nineteen. Okay, so people want to talk about those kind of things. So oh, what happens to your boss? Oh, my boss is fifty year old. He doesn't understand me. You know stuff like that. So those are real issues, real life issues that's happening. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide. I can't stress this enough. Practice with your friends. Have a debate. Uh, yang pandai cakap English lebih sikit tu, please encourage your friend to speak. And you know, doesn't matter if you make that mistakes. Doesn't matter. I've like as I mentioned in the introduction, I've spoken in many international conferences. Um, uh, various. I've spoken in Amsterdam. I've spoken in Washington um, uh, recently, and and you can see that the speakers, katala from mana, from Russia or from Eastern Europe, their English are not that great. I, I, seriously, but because they know the topic so well, they just speak as long as the audience understand and the audience understand and nobody even laugh at them, even the native speakers. As long as what's your point? Your point is such and such because they are the subject matter of that area. So we really want to, we really want to hear you speak and, and send your message across. English you, terror tak terror secondary, asalkan faham. That's why I have the point number three there. You are assessed on your confidence and participation first and eloquent second. Eh? So, please, please practice. Eh? Siapa yang nak cakap English tu, kawan-kawan, tolonglah jangan gelak. Eh? Janganlah kata dia poyo ke and stuff like that. This is the real world. You need to be good in Malay and English. Eh? There's no excuse. All right, the next one. I think this is my last slide. <coughs> ah, elevator pitch. Ah. Tahu tak elevator pitch apa, Azim? Elevator pitch eh, I think uh, I'm going to catch you questions. there, tidur ke? <laughs> <laughs> common okay. questions uh, uh. Common questions yang interviewer will ask interviewees uh. You know, such as uh, Tell me about yourself Why do you oh. want to apply the scholarship? Uh. So lah, I think so Close lah, close uh. Uh, <laughs> Selanjutnya, you naik lift berapa saat? Huh? Kalau naik kata, uh, naik lift Ada dalam 15 ke 30 saat kan? Uh -huh, yes. Uh, dia punya idea macam tu lah Konon, let's say you are in the lift with someone And someone that you really have to meet And you only have 15 to 30 seconds Or in my case 17 seconds lah kan <laughs> yeah, To talk So How do you really uh, Make the person and apa, Remember you And make an impression yeah? uh, So what do you want to do? You want to keep it simple and you want to keep it memorable, all right? 
okay, many may not agree with me on this one lah, but this is my method. Uh, and I use it a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, is I prepare a script. Okay, kalau aku jumpa ni, aku nak cakap apa? You know, like if I meet the person, uh, what do I want to say? Or if someone asks me, uh, tell me about yourself. That is a common question. I, For someone who doesn't like to talk about herself, which is me, I think I need a script. Yeah, I will say things like, oh, I was, uh, um, you know, things like, oh, I'm from MRSM Typing. I graduated from UC College London. I am, um, I've been working with Petronas for 20 years. Now I'm head of gas pricing. I ensure that the nation is, you know, uh, is, uh, can afford uh, the, the power that we've given them. If I give them that kind of information, get, get kind of um, apa, jawapan, it shows what? It shows that I, I want to talk about my career. But if I give a little bit more things like, oh, I'm a mother of three, uh, meaning what? That means that I, I'm able to juggle my work and my family together. So for me, elevator pitch ni macam, uh, how do you say? It's a, uh, it's a very short description about something. And the question that I, I would recommend for you to prepare is like, typical question lah, Hazim. Kalau I, I would say things like, oh, you want to prepare a pitch about uh, a simple one, like, um, uh, tell me about yourself. Because for me, I'll come up with the lamest, lamest thing ever. Because I do not like to talk about myself. Maybe you want to come, come up with a, with a 15, uh, 17 uh, seconds pitch on, oh, why do you want to do forensic science, Hazim? It's such a strange degree, you know. You, I'm sure you have an, you have an answer, right? Like Lenny, why do you want to do chemical engineering? Oh, I have to admit, I did not have an answer then. I wish someone has told me you have to have an answer on why you want to do chemical engineering 20 years ago. Um, itulah, I think. I think uh, that, like, like I say, not everybody will agree about preparing a script for elevator pitch. But what I'm saying is really knowing what you want to say in a short amount of time. Make it simple, make it memorable. Um, and it, 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 this goes with practice. And if I may, uh, start, start immediately. Start immediately. You're going to go through this scholarship interview for of, of, of all these processes later. And you have to remember, you are in competition not only with uh, MRSM students, but also with the other SBPs, with the other private schools. Um, yeah. So I think that's the end, kan? Um, siapa, Hazim? I think that's the end. Okay, that is the end. <laughs> so thank you so much. If uh, anybody has got questions, ke apa -apa, uh, maybe Hazim All can right. help me summarize. Okay. Uh, before I go to that, I think I want to point out a few things, okay? Ah. Especially for multi, multi, multi generation workforce. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Just students, you need to face the reality that if you work in a company, you are not going to work with your friends and you are going to work multiple generations, she's the same age as her father, the same age as her brother, it doesn't matter lah. I think I, I think I want to highlight three things, you know, that can be useful in any type of communication, even if with your family, with your teachers, with your boss, with your managers, the three things would be negotiating, uh, negotiating, uh, tolerating, and understanding lah. For me, lah, kan? for me, my opinion based on my experiences lah, kan? uh -huh. working in several organizations because I think negotiating, negotiating is very important because you want to fight for your interests and at the same time, the other side also want to fight for their own interests. But uh, so with the negotiations, you both can have a common interest and at the end of the day, you can get uh, uh, a balanced outcome lah, for your side and also the other side as well. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Uh, Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> Nanti kalau you masuk workforce later, yeah, your boss is probably 20, 30 years older than you. So you have to manage that kind of <laughs> age gap, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? I think dah masuk QA yeah, yeah. kot, no? Ah, uh. uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, most, of the, most of the students ask about itulah, how to deal with the dominant person. How to deal with? Uh, a dominant, a dominant oh, person. Oh, dominant person eh. You mean during interview ke day to day? Uh -huh. <laughs> during, <laughs> during interview? interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yes, yes. <laughs> um, actually, kan, uh, I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think this batch is 2020. I had a, I had a, a, a liberty to interview maybe your junior Azim and maybe the orang punya senior. Uh, he, his name was Zarif, Zarif Zafwan from MSM Taiping during recent scholarship interview. Mungkin, uh, mungkin uh, adik-adik kat sini kenal kot. Eh? I think he's got a very good way to <laughs> to apa tu counter orang yang dominant ni. Because during his interview, there's someone who's like really, oh, it's about my idea, it's my idea. But he will say, no, no, uh, he will let the person finish and then you will counter back. Eh? Uh, to me, to me, do not give up. Do not give up. Orang macam ni memang they are, um, I'm not sure whether they are purposely like that or not. But they are, it's, sometimes, sometimes for lack of better word, it's always about them, right? So when we have a character like this, uh, my 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 advice is jangan give up. Tunggu dia habis cakap and then continue. So but when you interrupt, it will never end. Because when you uh, when you fin uh, let him finish or let her finish, and then you say out your ideas, then it will be a better conversation. Imagine kalau dia interrupt and dia dominant and you pun sama juga. I don't think that's going to be the end of it. And as an interviewer, during those kind of sessions, I actually call out. My personal thing, I call out. Because my role there is to find the best persons that meets my criteria. Eh? Tapi don't use, don't abuse that because oh, tak pula nanti interviewer will will call him out and I can speak. No, you have to fight as well. Eh? You have to wait and you have to fight as well. For me, for me, I will call out lah. Kalau during interview and you as a interviewer, you want you you, you really want to exercise your rights lah. Let him finish and then you continue. To me, that's how I would do it lah. I, uh, unless someone has got a better way, I'm more than happy to hear it because that is a character that you will you will face for the rest of your life really someone dominant and someone who wants to hog the conversation yeah yeah okay another question all right hmm. some companies except for fashion industry lah some industry or some of the employers uh, tend to choose beauty over quality during interview so okay and how do we tackle this issue beauty Kira, if you are cute, you are in, is it? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not make the accusation lah, but okay, Shani. Um, for me, for a lot of companies, eh, we look at professionalism. Meaning that if you want to come for interview, please take the effort to dress properly. Eh, to dress properly. Uh, kalau nak pakai baju kurung pun tak ada masalah. Tak ada siapa paksa you nak pakai suit, for instance, kan? Dress properly. Apa? What's the word? Ah, huh? Dress for the job lah. Pakai elok, put on uh, muka tu presentable. You know, if you don't want to wear makeup, it's fine. I'm not going to say that makeup is a must. But, you know, make yourself presentable. Wear the right outfit. Wear the right shoes. Bring, bring your documents. And that in itself, you're presenting yourself professionally. And if you tak dapat because the company... Uh, prefer beauty over brains well that's not a company worth joining is it so itulah uh, grooming lah did you i thought you have a grooming class tadi kan so boleh lah tengok video tu uh, how do you present yourself <laughs> uh, dress uh, nice respect uh, respectable you know within our culture lah the way that uh, our culture uh, you know putting a uh, allows it yeah <clears throat> Next one, uh, what to do if people uh, are not interested if we are trying our best during, uh, during interview session and interview session and how do we disagree with other people? Mm, okay, how do we disagree with other people? Eh? How do you disagree and how, uh, what's the first part of the question? Uh, what to do if people are not interested if we are doing our best lah, macam kita rambut bersebut tapi orang macam Okay, okay, those are two. Yes, uh. I have that question. Uh, number one, agility. If you keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, orang tak interested sebab apa? Eh? Stop pushing it. Maybe it's not relevant. Maybe for you to reassess balik, is my idea really irrelevant? Yeah. Why, why wouldn't, <laughs> I, I'm not blaming you, don't get me wrong, but 
pushing uh, if you ask me pushing to a certain extent yes this is my idea and i think it's a good idea eh? keep on but then when it come to a point where people are not interested anymore there must be a reason eh? uh, sometimes to persuade you do not have to always push you put it aside and then come back to the idea because there are two reasons idea idea tu memang tak bernas Sometimes that happens, right? <laughs> or idea to people are not ready to accept it yet because they don't understand where you're coming from. Right? Uh -huh. They don't understand, kenapa kau cakap macam ni? Ya? Maybe they're just not ready for that idea. Just put it aside first. When the time comes during the during the conversation, bring it back in. Bring it back in. Sometimes it's the, just the conversation has not evolved to the point where your ideas have been, your ideas is relevant. Sometimes, sometimes you are ahead of the conversation, it can be another reason why those ideas are not accepted. Uh, so that's part, that's agility for you to, for you to tengok lah, uh, okay, this idea is a good idea. I'm, I, I, I am sure this is a good idea. But probably now is not the best time. I wait for it. Kejap lagi, kejap lagi. Tunggulah. Janganlah nak juga push, you know. Well, people are not accepting it, you know. So find the right time for for the idea is uh, when the idea is suitable to be discussed again so that's my that's my experience lah uh, oh yeah what to do if we screw up our first impression i i, I somehow this is my favorite question now if we screw up our first impression what should we do <laughs> alama <laughs> What do we do if we screw up a false impression? Ah, ayo. During eh, during the interview eh. Yeah. Saya masuk masuk bila interview dia tu juga terjatuh lah. Terjatuh tak screw up presentation Azim. It's okay. We will help you up. You have you have you have thirty minutes lah to come back up. Remember the four things I've told you: communication. Um, communicate, apa? Communication, agility, teamwork, and what's the other one? Social confidence. Eh? Um, as interviewer, eh, we are told to look at how you improve during that thing. Katalah you screw up, you ada masa lagi. Kita tak akan penalize you. Don't worry. Don't worry. You are, uh, for lack of a better word, you are still kids. <laughs> you still have a lot to learn. And I would not. Oh, this guy is terrible. But over time, you can. Uh, over time, you 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 uh, participate as part of the team. You give ideas. You well, if you must apologize, apologize if you must. You know, people know that you know everybody. Everybody there is com coming. Ada satu motif je, to show their best. If things go up, apologize and move on and do the four things that I told you to do. Um, as interviewer, we don't judge too quickly. We are. We are trained not to judge too quickly, uh, so that we give everybody equal chance. Uh, because um, we later, you know, later you guys will be working for the organization that is being uh, you are being interviewed, and we want the best for the organization as well. So for us not to, you know, just to just cut you off and uh, judge like that, I don't think it's very fair, lah. And it probably does not really portray the core values of the companies anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah, so feedback is a culture in a lot of organization. So if an interviewer give you a feedback, you take it and you move on. That shows what? That shows agility. That shows that you're a team worker. So, mm -hmm. so I, you know, nothing to worry. Just uh, uh, keep calm and move on. Yeah, that's what we say, right? Keep calm and move on, yeah. Last question. <laughs> Is it good to be someone else during the interview? Macam sebelum ni kita rasa-rasa je. When during the interview, kita tiba nak berselang-selang pula kan. Macam ni lah. You, you be the best version of yourself during the interview. Kalau you tak biasa cakap selang, janganlah cuba nak cakap selang during interview tu. I mean that's your example, right? But for me, be the best version of yourself. Be prepared. Speak the way that you normally speak. Uh, read up. Um, practice with your friends, your parents, whoever. Um, 
No. Okay lah. A quick answer to that. No lah Zim. Don't be someone else. <laughs> Don't be someone else. Be the best, best version of yourself. Kalau you macam tu, macam tu lah. Just be the best version of yourself. Uh, because we know. You're, you're here. You are here to be groomed. You are here to be groomed further. And that's uh, that's that's your journey for the next five to seven years until you finish your degree. So yeah, that's that's my advice, personal advice. Yeah. Okay, so that marks the end of our webinar. Thank you, Miss Lenny, for this tremendous and amazing presentation. I hope students uh, can gain uh, most. I, I don't think most. I think you should you should you should be focused and gain the knowledge from this from Miss Lenny lah because she is an interviewer for the drone. Yeah, she got yeah. one of the biggest scholarship in Malaysia, right? So you guys, I think you guys can gain something. Yeah. And make sure you scan the QR code for feedback. Thank you very much. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Can I, I, <laughs> I nampak budak-budak 503 kat situ. Can I get uh, a, can you guys? a hello? Hey! <laughs> so, yes. Can you guys? Uh, I'm not sure whether, camera? yeah, yeah. I am not sure whether that's the same class where I used to be. Uh, I don't know. The, the, no. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, thank you guys. It was uh, great speaking with you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy your week.